Good afternoon, everybody. It's been a few weeks since I sent you a video from the pastor's desk, so I figured I might as well send one out from the pastor's dining room today. Um, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth from working in the Holdsworth room and working from the homestead um, as uh, my, my office is part of the blocked off area and where they're doing the demo and, and all that because of the water damage stuff. So um, I, I've been kind of out of sorts a little bit, but I'm trying to get into back into a little bit of a, an area of um, normalcy, I guess you'd say. But uh, it's been interesting. It's been kind of a, a bit of a headache as far as having them doing the demo work in the church and being blocked off from the hallway. It's amazing how much we actually utilize that hallway to go back and forth from one side to the other. Um, I guess you don't. I guess you, you know, take it for granted that it's there until it's not. So uh, be praying for that situation. Uh, we had a meeting with the trustee board on Monday night and the uh, the representatives from Crow's Restoration who's been doing the work. Um, we're looking at, they, they said, rough estimate about two months to get all the work completed. Talking about all the demo done and the reconstruction as well. So be praying for that process. Be praying for um, issues we've got going on with the uh, insurance company and um, and the uh, building consultant and all that. So it's just it's a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts. We're trying to get the work done while also not being sure exactly uh, where we stand as far as coverages and things. But I'm not going to bore you with that information. I'm just going to say just be praying for that. It's coming very close to a uh, a definite resolution moving forward. And once we have that, we can move forward with confidence, knowing that the work's going to get done that we can get done. I uh, think about 2 Corinthians chapter 12 with the Apostle Paul and uh, how he had his great revelation of the heavens and being, and seeing glory. And it was, it was absolutely amazing what he got to see, what God allowed him to see. And he says in verse 7, So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong." So I don't know how many of you may have needed to hear that, that reminder that you know, despite our weaknesses or the persecutions and insults we face and the hardships we have, uh, God's grace is sufficient for us. And as petty of an issue as it is that we can't use the hallway in the church and, or the bathrooms in the church, um, we know God's grace is sufficient and that the work is going to get done and we're going to get through this. It's a small hardship in life that God is good. He's seeing us through it. And I want to encourage you to continue to seek him in his word. Continue to dig into it. Read through the book of James as we're working on uh, completing that, Lord willing, this coming month. And uh, it's just, it's, it's what's happening. You know, God brings these trials into our lives to mold us into the image of Christ. So let's rejoice in that. And I want to encourage you to encourage one another. Uh, reach out, phone call, email, text message, um, cards, letters, whatever. And uh, just be an encouragement to folks uh, because you never really know what somebody's going through or how much they have on their plate. And an, an encouraging word uh, can be, mean so much to them. So I just wanted to share that with you and remind you to encourage and love one another. Uh, we've got a lot going on this month in the month of October at our church. I uh, just want to remind you about next Wednesday, the 13th at 6.30 p.m. is our annual business meeting. So please, uh, all members, plan on being in attendance at that meeting as we discuss the church business from the past year and we project what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, so please uh, plan on being there next Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. 
And then after the annual meeting, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the ladies' retreat at Camp Sentinel. Um, We've been promoting it and advertising it for several months. It is finally here. So I hope that you've already signed up and you've been in touch with Janie or Mandy. And uh, they've, they've, I know, contacted the camp and talked about dietary restrictions and needs and such. Uh, If you have not done that, please contact Janie immediately like finish pause this video go contact Janie and then come back and finish it but um that's uh, that's coming up next weekend i know it was a it was 110 dollars uh, per person um and as Janie would tell me to tell you um if money is an issue please let her know because there's no no way that somebody can't go because they can't afford it so just let Janie know that, hey, you know, I don't have it, but I want to go. She would, she'll give you the thumbs up to go. I'm 100% positive of that. And I'm saying this without prior approval. Um, but be sure that that's all taken care of. That's coming up next weekend. Ladies, you're going to have a great weekend. I've heard of uh, what's coming, a little bit of what's coming down the pipe, and I think it's going to be awesome. And I'm, in, I'm uh, excited about your fellowship during that time. After the ladies retreat, the following weekend, the Sawyers will be here. So after a failed trip to Sekinani in February, and then again in April, and a failed trip for the Sawyers to Shapley in September, our prayer is that it's finally gonna happen at the end of this month, the weekend of the 21st through the 25th. So please be praying that COVID stays away from the church, stays away from the Sawyers, And we can have a a meeting, a time to gather and fellowship and encourage and love on one another. And uh, I'll remind you of the the schedule for that as that week approaches. But that Saturday, uh, the 23rd, you've got the men's prayer breakfast at 730 at the church. And you got a ladies brunch at 9 at uh, the Lau and Deb Robertson homestead. So... Uh, the men's breakfast will have Travis Sawyer sharing about the ministry and taking uh, questions and answers, answer time. And uh, the ladies' brunch will be Laura sharing about discipleship opportunities she has with the ladies in Kenya, specifically what those ladies endure and go through. And um, it is a it is going to be a conversation that's more mature for a more mature audience. So it's encouraged not to bring little kids, young kids uh, to this, um, to that brunch just because of the content of the conversation. Um, That's all I've got for you this week. I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, I'm excited to get another video out to you. It's been so long and uh, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We're going to be in the book of James chapter five. Um, God has brought us this far through that great letter, um, a great letter of challenge for us as we consider our faith and living out our faith and showing the love of Jesus through our lives, through our words, and through our actions. You have a wonderful week. I love you guys, and God bless.